What's up, everybody? This is Jed Coburnus from jedcoburnus.com, and this is Talk Therapy, and I have no idea what I'm going to say today, and that's what it's all about. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I just talk out loud. I just literally, or, or really, it's not talking out loud. It's all we do is talk out loud, but I think out loud. <clears throat> it basically gives me a chance to kill the ego, to kill that, that voice that we all have that shuts down the creativity side, the side that of our brain or our mind or our, you know, whatever it is in our head that it just, that it just, we don't, we don't tap into much anymore. And I think that, I think that, you know, today, man, today I'm having a hard time getting to getting to what I'm gonna say because why I don't know I don't know and I love that I don't know what's going on in my head right because this is talk therapy first 10 minutes I in there there are days where I go 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes but a lot of times the first 10 minutes is me versus my ego the second 10 minutes is me with my ego and the third 10 minutes is basically just me. Sometimes it takes me all of 20 minutes to get out of my head and into my body and, you know, like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of different. It's kind of, you know, whatever. And, and why do I do this? I don't know. You know, it's just something that I do. Talk therapy. Kyle Cease definitely opened me up to this. It's just talking out loud. It's literally just is thinking out loud to the fact that Hey, you know, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything profound. But what'll happen is, is your body just completely takes over and your mind shuts down. And wouldn't it be awesome if we could just operate from that place all the time, every day? Yes. The answer is yes, it would be awesome. And, you know, the big thing is, is kids do it all the time. They know no fear. <laughs> like, they don't have even the cognitive function to have fear. And there are people who live like that every day. You have no fear. Fear of what? Fear of loss? Oh, sorry. Oh, fear of anything, right? Not that you can't fear. Like, you should fear enough, right? Fear is kind of what keeps us alive. But what if, right? It, it's just funny because <clears throat> there was a cartoon on last night or a, a movie or whatever and it was about cavemen and you can have your beliefs about evolution or whatever and I don't really care but what was funny is like the if we go back to, you know, primal times and all we go off is instinct, right? You go only by your body and you only you only have your awareness like if that was your only tool how would how would that look how would your awareness look for your survival rate right like way back when just getting through the day was a win and planning 20 years from now 30 years from now and worrying about the past and all that fun stuff was like did people worry about that back then 100 years ago did people worry about that you know 1916 were people in 1916 worrying about 2016 were people today 2016 worried about were our people in 2016 worried about 2116 100 years ago now 100 years from now that's my question for today like what's our awareness for the past the present and the future awareness is key like last night i did the first episode of the physiology show and that was awesome like i had so much fun it was only 15 minutes but I didn't think it had to be more than that. And then I get to do some fun editing and all that stuff with it. And, you know, I mean, it just, 
I don't know, it, it just seems like a lot of fun to me. In my online work, as my wife calls it, and she put little, her little quote fingers up, and she's like, oh, oh yeah, you gotta do your online work. And I'm just like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it to the fact that it doesn't generate a boatload of income yet, and that's okay with me. <clears throat> because, you know, she just sees it as a hobby still. But that's okay. It is okay. Like, the awareness that I have for that is just... You know, it's making a little bit of money. But not a lot. And... <clears throat> if you're coming from your truth, from your center... It's okay to not make a lot of money. Right away. Like, there... I think that... <clears throat> it will... Like, eventually it will. And way sooner than I'm even expecting. Because I have zero expectations. Like, just the fact that I'm generating any kind of income from me just being me and being on video. Like, just making a few little videos here and there and blog posts and stuff like that. That's amazing to me. It is amazing to me that that's happening. <clears throat> right? So, my projection is that it's only going to get better. Right? I mean, it literally is only going to get better. It's already really good. Like, don't get me wrong. But, what's funny to me is that <laughs> it took me this long to get there. Like, I've been, I've been doing this kind of stuff now for over a year, over, you know, almost two years. And I'm just now starting to realize the impact that I have had. Like, I didn't even know. I had no idea. And my awareness to that now is really, really, really at an all-time high. Because, you know... This gal, Angela, this gal, Angela, I, and she was like, you know, right after I, cause I went on Facebook live with it. And again, I'm talking to myself. I'm literally talking to myself and talking to myself like into what I'm doing. <clears throat> and it's funny because she, she mess or she, uh, posted on the video. She posted on the video saying, hey, you know, I've been following you for over a year, and I've lost 24 pounds, and I, I, you know, I really, I knew that she kind of was following, but I didn't know, you know, like, I really didn't know, stuff like that, but the, the funny part of all that is, is I asked her for a testimonial, and I think people think of testimonials as ways to sell other people on it for me testimonials are my fuel obviously to keep me going like regardless if I have testimonials or not I'm gonna keep going I know that because it's from my truth but for somebody to let me know how they're doing you know if I haven't ever heard from them or if I haven't if I didn't hear from them for quite a while and then all of a sudden they're like hey check this out that's a massive 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 amount of respect right there that I have and it's not it's not to stroke my ego it's not to be like oh, you know what you're doing it's it's like that's really that's really right there. That means more to me than than any paycheck. It really does. Like, yeah, I mean, any paycheck, yeah, you know, I need to generate income to keep this stuff going. But that right there, like, is amazing to me. And, and people think I'm nuts by going, you're doing this for free. Why are you putting all this out there for free? You should be charging for all this. I'm going to put my best content out there for free. Like, I'm going to over-deliver on everything that I do. Like, that's just how it works. I'm going to over-deliver on everything that I do. Because if I didn't, I just don't feel like I'd be doing anybody a good 
a good service. And that's that's what I you know I mean I'm talking myself into keeping going, keeping doing. Like she was saying that she's she's been through like two pregnancies, almost two pregnancies with my help, and she, without my help, she wouldn't have known how to be healthy through those pregnancies. And I'm sitting here like, whoa, two pregnancies. That's at least eighteen months, right? That's a long time to be hanging with somebody and not, and not talking, not talking, not necessarily about them, but like to say, talk to them. I had no idea. That's amazing to me. Like, that's just amazing. The level of awareness that I have for myself is huge. Because you do inner work every day. And here, I'm literally talking to myself. I do. I do inner work every day. And if you do inner work every day, it will pay off. It will pay off tenfold. Like, taking care of yourself first has to happen. Taking care of yourself first has to happen. And as new parents, as any parents, for some reason, all of that goes to the wayside when, when we have kids. You know, even aunts and uncles and... I mean, everybody who has to take care of children at some point. All of your own... Personal care, your you first mentality goes away. How come that has to happen like that? Like, I understand it has to happen for like that at first. But... Taking care of yourself first. Like, if you... If you think that you can keep getting away with just giving everything up and giving everything away, no way. And again, I'm talking to myself right now. You have to take care of you first. You get to take care of you first. It's the level of self-worth that you have for yourself. You know? I mean, it really is. When it comes down to your self-worth, and if you don't have that self-worth, what does that look like? That paints a pretty un undesirable picture. That paints a picture of sadness, emptiness, darkness, right? All of those niss words. <laughs> Everything's dark. Everything is victimized. I don't have time. I don't have. Actually, right there. We could just stop right there. I don't have. That's what a low self-worth is all about. So by, by creating the physiology show, basically, it's, it's an outlet for me to give all of my best content away for free. All of my best information that I've ever learned right there for free. The daily wads, right? The workouts. Also, my best content. Because that's literally what I'm going through with my body and my changes. That's it's one person's perspective, right? But my experience in education, I think, is what separates me. And the pure fact that I'm just going to keep doing this. If it takes more than 365, more than 365 watts, I will keep creating. <clears throat> but my calling and my desire to create a book or a program or a whatever for weight loss is there. Like I'm writing my own, I'm writing a book and I had no idea. And that's what I'm doing, like each and every day. I just have the level of awareness to to keep to keep it, to keep going, to keep loving. And no matter where I am and what I'm doing, and that's I think that's why it's it's not it's not scary for me to change jobs and change completely change locations 
because I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And, and it's funny because, you know, Jess last night was like, oh yeah, you, you know, you got to get all of your online stuff in quotes, right? Like your online work done now because, you know, before we move. And I'm like, oh honey, I'll fit it in. She's like, well, yeah, you probably can't do it at night anymore because, you know, you probably won't be able to do it. And I'm just like, oh, honey, I'll fit it in. And she just kind of rolled her eyes like, yeah, right. What's really funny about that is I, I do. I, I don't even want to say it. Like I was going to say, I do think that she thinks it's going to be over when, it, when we move. But really what's going to happen is it's only going to get better when we move. Like, the content that I get to create is only going to get better. Because I'm going to have so much more perspective. Like, right now, I would say for the last how many years, it's only been preparation. It's been a huge preparation for what about what is about to happen. Or is what is already happening and what has already happened. Because there are people out there who have been following me since day one. And day one is almost two years ago. And now, just now, I am starting to realize that and have my awareness be where it's at. Like, now I get to start tapping the resources of, of what has really brought me to this place. And what resources is that? People. People. Those who have known what I've done since day one and now the ask right the ask what is the ask <clears throat> I had a, a, a little meeting with um, with uh, the executive director yesterday which is awesome and she she's very direct and to the point which man I can I can respect the hell out of because <clears throat> that's literally how I am too is she's like so what's the ask what's your ask here and I'm like holy crap you are awesome. <laughs> like literally, I was, I you know, when here in it's it's an, it's an impromptu meeting. So, but she's just like, so what's your ask here? And I'm like, I was floored. I was like, holy shit! I really, you know, I I was I was myself in that meeting, but not all the way, right? Because you know, I'm leaving and I want to make good impressions and, and stuff like that. But <laughs> I just. As soon as she asked me, just direct. I was just like, "Damn, you need to stay here because she's a, she's the interim, right? She's the interim executive director right now." But I would say her level of awareness of herself and her confidence in herself is massive, right? Massive because she can just be direct and to the point. Or or I could be wrong, and she could be completely insecure and that's why she I don't know like my gut tells me that she's pretty damn confident though but anyway so the ask right what is the ask my ask is starting to ask people how have I helped right how have I helped you not to and not to sell right not not for sales not for anything for me like I've been doing this long enough now to say, how have I helped you? And if there's still no answer, that's okay. I'll still continue to ask. But for the people out there who've been seeing this since day one and said nothing, those are called lurkers, right? You're called a lurker at that point. And there's nothing worse than a lurker, right? In my book, a lurker does not communicate. A lurker takes in all the information, takes in all the benefits, and says nothing. Right? That's like that's like taking in all of the benefit of living in, in America and not going to vote. Way to go, moron. Like, really? Come on. Nothing pisses me off more than anybody who doesn't talk right it li like i get it right i completely understand if you're shy and you you want privacy i get that but there are ways around talking right you don't have to be public about it 
And I'm not going to air out everybody else's stuff if you didn't want me to, right? Like, I'm human too. I completely understand that. And the awareness that I have now, like literally this is what I'm calling it today is awareness. Basically how to increase your awareness. And it's inner peace, right? Like it's inner work. Physiology of your mind and your body is psychophysiology, right? Like psycho, I think we have distorted that word quite a bit. Psycho is, you know, short for psychology, the mind, right? And I think physiology, actually I know physiology is has everything to do with organisms and biology and, and how they work. So if you go psychophysiology, it's a combination of the mind and the body. And that's really what I do. So maybe I can call it the psychophysiology show. Nope, I'm calling it the physiology show. It feels a lot better. <laughs> right there, that's what I do is I just change my mind. I f my mind actually, right there, my mind was trying to trick me. It's, it's going to your body. It's listening to your body. That's what it's all about. Literally, it's listening to your body. <clears throat> so like it was saying last night, I loved it, right? Like the physiology show episode one, I felt like I was truly within myself. And, and I was so, I was nervous all the way up to the point because, well, actually, no, you know, yesterday I, I acknowledged the nervousness. I accepted the nervousness and I loved the nerves. And then I was, and then it was gone, right? But I think for the most part, when I start, I started talking, it, it, it preparation was nothing like I had no preparation I just kind of hit record and it was awesome <clears throat> like I'll record it live through Facebook live because that's fun right that's pretty fun for me but there's no preparation <clears throat> like the only reason that I would need prep is if I didn't know what I was talking about and I think that happens way too often. Like the physiology show, I bring that to the table because I, I'm only going to talk about the things that I know, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm constantly learning new things because that's how it works. I'm constantly learning new things. But if, if, we, if I bring stuff to the table that I don't know what I'm doing, like, that's gonna be very apparent. Like, my gut, my, my, my body, my truth, that's what I follow. That's what I follow. And only in the last probably two years have I even gotten to this place. And that's okay, right? I've always had the awareness, though. Like, I've always had the awareness of what my body likes and does not like like that's that's been with me for years that's been with me since I was since I lost my weight basically right since middle school ever since I mean I at first I didn't like it right at first I didn't like eating different kinds of foods that that filled me up right away and you know, and I would say that's one of my biggest weaknesses. If anybody was were to call me out on something that I had no idea what to do, is meal plans. Like my biggest weakness is meal plans. But I I think that's I think that's where I am different compared to other coaches or mentors or anything. Is meal planning, right? Everybody wants an exact meal plan. Here's a meal plan. Here's this. Here's a meal plan. Can I get a meal plan? Can I get a diet, a certain diet to go by? Here's the thing. Here's the differentiating factor, I think, for me. And, and what I bring to the table. And I think my weakness is I can, I can play that. I can play that as a selling factor. I don't do meal plans because once that meal plan is done, you're just going to go right back to eating that shit that you ate before. So instead of meal plans and like, here's a 30 day meal plan, how about you learn 
what your body wants. How about let's figure out what that looks like for you. I and I'm literally I'm literally talking to myself. Like I love the fact that I've that I brought this up today that I that I'm talking about this because the level of awareness that I have for a weakness of mine, which is food and understanding exactly how many calories I need and all that other crap that, you know, oh, we got to eat less calories. That is just not even true. A calorie is a calorie. Sugar is sugar. Fat's fat. Protein's protein. Like, there's so many people who go, I don't know how to eat. I don't know what to eat. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you can wake up and take care of your children and take care of yourself, if you can make it to the end of the day, you have enough awareness, you have enough cognitive ability to figure out what to eat. And especially, especially in today's day and age, because we have these little things called cell phones and they connect to the bigger thing called an internet. <laughs> Nothing pisses me off more is when somebody says, well, I just don't know what to eat. Oh, I don't know, Google it. You have the same damn connection as I do. If you're listening to this, you have an even better connection because you're 26 minutes in. You have the same thing. Now, the question, you know, a lot of people might say is, well, how come you still don't create your own meal plans so you can sell those? Man, meal plans have already been created. Meal plans, you can Google free meal plan, free healthy meal plan. Do that, right? Food for me is a utility. That's where I've gotten in my journey. Like I, I would say donuts and ice cream are still like the only thing that can get me to go, oh, this is good. Like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy food, but not to the fact of like, oh man, I, I, I re it makes me happy, right? Like good food, bad food, whatever it is, it doesn't make me happy or sad. And getting to that level of awareness takes everyday practice. Food is a utility, not something that makes you happy or sad. And how do you get to that point? Well, just like everything else, my way is not the sexiest way. My way is not the fastest way. But I can tell you this for sure, it's the most permanent way. And what is my way? Daily. Daily, daily, daily practice. How many days in a row can you string together for your daily practice, right? If you get one day, perfect. If you can commit to one day a week, and even if it's one squat, one day a week, and you mark it down and you put it somewhere and you're proud of that fact, that's a freaking win. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be, I mean, it could be a squat. It could be a push-up. It, you know, as long as you're interrupting your patterns enough, that's what it's about. And literally, I am. I'm talking to myself. I'm not outside of any of this. Commit. Commitment. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a really good one. The awareness that I have for myself is massive. The awareness that I have for anything is at an all-time high, and I am grateful for that. So as always, if you're willing to change from the neck up, you will change from the neck down. I believe in you. Now it's your turn to start believing in yourself. And if you're looking to get on my newsletter, jedcoberness.com forward slash newsletter, send out daily messages. It's a daily newsletter. Give it a shot. Stay safe out there. Be blessed. Bye for now.